Hi everyone, it's Laura, and I am so happy to be doing a video today. It's been a really long time, so I apologize for that, but I thought what better place to start than in front of these beautiful sunflowers here. Uh, I love sunflowers. They must be one of my favorite flowers of all time. I don't want to block the beauty there. Um, I have a couple different varieties here. This one here is Pro Cut Plum. It's a single stem variety. I planted all of these, I'm gonna say, at least two months ago. And in fact, just the other day, I put some more seeds uh, in my bed here, hoping to maybe get another flush of blooms for fall time. So pretty to have the sunflowers in the fall. So here I am, I'm back. I would like to note, uh, if you guys are on Instagram at all, especially, I'm on there every day posting stories and you know little videos and things like that and garden updates. So check me out on Instagram or Facebook because it does carry over to Facebook as well, but I prefer uh, Instagram. It's just very easy to answer questions on there. So if you have any questions specifically, uh, please put them down below in the comments and I do try and get back to you guys. Time has been crazy. My mom and dad have the boys right now. They uh, have a little pool set up in the backyard. So I thought, let me get on here, show you guys what's blooming in this July garden. So here I am. Um, this was what I thought was also a pro cut plum. We can see that that's not the case. It is beautiful. This is a single stem, the uh, pro cut plum. And I also have another one in the back called, I think, uh, panache. Okay, so let me, let me, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to get my sea legs back again. I'm usually on the other side of the camera doing little Instagram stories. So I uh, just want to kind of figure out what would be the best way to take you guys along. That cat scat mat I had told you guys about, it's a little prickly mat. I got it from Gardener Supply and you know, you can put that and lay that down with some landscape staples to kind of protect some of those seedlings and get them going. But in this case, I put them in the raised bed and it worked out like a charm. That's not to say I won't have something jump in here and eat them up in the future, but this time I got lucky and I just think that they are so beautiful. I have some um, Crichton Honey Dahlia in the front here. You can't really see them because they're not doing a whole heck of a lot at the moment, but hopefully those will pick up now that the temperatures are on the rise and heating up. So I planted a Queensland blue squash here in the corner. So I'm gonna let that trail along and come down and hopefully, you know, I'll have some of those beautiful unusually blue uh, color squash. And I have some cucumbers in the back, two of them. I just planted some Mexican gherkins, the little mini Mexican gherkin cucamelons there. And I do have, oh, I wanna show you. I'll get in close on that. I have a white-eyed Susan growing here from Seeds I Direct Sowed. So I am happy about that uh, because goodness gracious, they took a long time. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna talk to you about my sweet peas and what I have going on in the bed over here. So right here, I've got two tall trellises. These are from Plow and Hearth. They're called their pot trellises. And I just have them staked down with landscape staples. And my sweet peas are just going bonkers every day. You know, I'm out here clipping handfuls of them. They are very uh, hungry plants. This is my first year for them. But what I did was I planted them in the Espoma raised bed uh, mix. And then I mixed in a little bit of manure because I read that that was a really good thing to do. And then I just went along with some of the Espoma land and sea compost. I put that along on the top and I've been going along with uh, their liquid tomato feed and doing that about once a week. I heard that they like the tomato feed. So that's what I'm going with. It's all kind of trial and error when you're starting something new. So we'll see what works best. But for now, that's what I'm doing in the back here. This huge green, that's a mazel basil. That's just two plants and it is huge. It definitely lives up to the name. I've got some tricolor sage in the front here and some lavender looking really pretty and just a couple little Rebecca uh, in the corner there that are butted up and starting to bloom. Now my tomato, which one is this? Uh, Mr. Stripey. <laughs> I bought Mr. Stripey because I like the name. So Mr. Stripey is looking okay. These other three are looking meh, but you know, I'll keep an eye on them and see. And I'm going to turn this around and show you these sunflowers close up because I just think they're so beautiful. Look at these. Aren't they so pretty? Oh gosh, I just love a good sunflower. So lovely. I'm really happy with those. Okay, so while I'm over here, my, my video skills are on point, you guys. So bear with me. It's only me out here, so I don't have anybody doing this 
and helping me. So here I have my beautiful Kent Oregano, Kent Beauty Oregano. So I pre-ordered it in, I think, December or January from Bluestone Perennial, and they came in early spring, and I, it was still too cold. So I had these five plants in here. I had them all kind of huddled together and sitting um, in my living room until it was time to plant. But they are just doing beautiful, and they're really starting to fill in now and just look gorgeous. And over next to it, I have a little copper bird bath from Good Directions, and I'm gonna be doing a video installing a post bird house from them as well. Um, I really love their products. I love copper accents in the garden, and I think having a little post bird house back here to kind of balance out, I have the big guy on the other side of the garden, and I think having one back here would look so beautiful and kind of complement that and maybe get a cross pattern of birds uh, flying through the garden, which I love. So on this um, tall bean pole trellis here, I've got some sugar ant snap peas and I have been snapping these guys off and eating them almost every day. So this is my uh, fig tree and it's looking beautiful. It's put on a lot of growth. I have one fig. I guess one fig is better than no fig, so I'll take what I can get. Um, this one is called Little Miss Figgy, and it's a dwarf variety. I have it in a container, and it was in a container over the winter in our unheated garage without any additional protection or anything like that. It dropped its leaves, it went dormant, and then in the spring I brought it out and it just flushed back all its new growth and it's doing fabulous. Know what I'm going to do? You guys have seen my face enough. I'm going to turn this around and just talk about the plants. <laughs> oh, that's better. Give you guys a good view of everything you don't need to see me you want to see the plants right so this is doublet love swept um it's a calibrecoa super bells so let me show you something here so see how the underneath part is getting like a little crispy and a little funny i don't know if you guys might have noticed that that's really you know they don't like a ton of moisture so that's really from touching that wet soil and just kind of sitting there and it just kind of gets crisped up in a little funky so what I did was I just took you can see a couple handfuls of the gravel and I put that underneath to kind of raise it up so it's not getting all that moisture and I can see that it's improving already and then I have one uh, dichondra silver falls in there and these are great you guys if you even just buy one plant see I'm tugging on it right now these grow roots on the surface and will just spread throughout the entire container it's some creeping up over there so really if you just if you're a little patient and you can put you know if you can wait it out put one of these plants in and they will fill your whole container up and i'll show you a close up here of the kent beauty oregano and it is a beauty they say uh in the description that it resembles hops and i think that it does very much so it has a very very nice scent and i noticed the pollinators just love this guy so beautiful and i've got some heavenly blue morning glory growing up the post here and i'm allowing it to go up the trellis right next to it there oh it's so much better being behind the camera for me <laughs> since i'm alone it, it makes life a lot easier so this is my limelight standard and it is all butted up and looking beautiful so i anticipate that you know within the week these will have some beautiful blooms very excited and there's the sunflowers again. Ooh, aren't they pretty swaying in the breeze? Oh, I love it. I don't know what you are, but I like you. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What can I show you? Things are filling in so much since the last time I was on here. This is Millennium Allium. Look how pretty these are. And these, you guys, wintered over right in this pot. I picked these up from Lowe's last year. I think it was just one large uh, container. And I cut all the foliage back in the fall. And this pot was virtually empty. It just looked like a big pile of dirt, you know? And it, to my amazement, Mother Nature, there it comes every year. It's so beautiful to see. Here is my Thumbergia, my, my white-eyed Susans on the obelisks here, and they are just doing amazing. I think the last time I showed you guys, they weren't anything like this, so they're doing incredible right now. And you guys might have seen on, on Instagram there, I had a snake. A, we, got, we have like 
black snakes here, about six feet long. Um, sometimes it's a rat snake, sometimes it's a racer, and I am not a snake enthusiast. So it went up kind of like into the rafter on the side. So it wasn't actually in the garage, but in like the soffit on the side there. So my husband went along with some spray foam <laughs> and I joke every day, you know, watering my roses from a distance. Um, I joke, but I'm definitely a little scared <laughs> to, to venture over here, but I'm going to for this video. Beyond this trellis, tons of weeds, because if you think I'm going back in this thicket when there's possibly a snake back there, you can think again. <laughs> but here is the beautiful Colette Rose. So gorgeous. I need to do a little deadheading, but for roses in a container, they are looking pretty good. I just moved those here this year from the backyard. Um, I thought they would look really pretty, just kind of hide the mess back here. And they are just taken off and looking so beautiful. And then I did already have a couple blooms on my wisteria that I put in this year. That was the um, blue moon wisteria. So I had a couple blooms there. And I just emptied out this bed. I had some um, red bliss potatoes in here and boy, I got quite the harvest. I didn't weigh them, I, I should do that, but it was over 100 potatoes for 21 um, seed potatoes that I planted, which I think is fantastic. I've got some little nasturtiums here just starting to, starting to recover from all the shade they were getting uh, with the potatoes. I like this one in particular, it's very pretty. Um, but I just did put in some Copenhagen cabbage and I did pop in just four little um, of the strawberry popcorn corn. It's late, uh, you know, but maybe, maybe if I'll get lucky and by October, I'll be able to pull a couple off and, you know, hang a little arrangement or something like that. You don't know unless you try and I've got the space, so I might as well pop them in. Um, this area here was all cut back recently and it is bringing back some blooms the Marcus uh, Meadow Sage, Salvia, same thing. Butterflies are liking it. And that is Pink Thrift. And that's pretty much done for the season, but boy, that bloomed for a good couple of months. Still got a cute little bloom right there. And you can see my tomatoes. I built this trellis here, kind of like a nod to Monty Don and all these English gardeners that I watch. I love how they just fashion these uh, supports made of twigs and branches and things like that. So I did build this structure early spring uh, for my beans and my tomatoes started getting so large that, so I, let me see if I can get this one out to show you. Okay, so I had them just stayed like this and they were wah, 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 kind of wonky. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna tuck it behind this trellis that I built and it has worked like a charm. So I have th my three tomatoes just kind of hooked under like that. Don't they look so nice? I am emotional over this. I am so happy. I look at this space and I am just in awe of everything. It was a lot of work so much work and um you know i i can i was out here raking and shoveling all of this gravel and leveling it out and you know running the drip and then covering the drip it, it was a lot uh i'm really happy to see the fruits of my labor and you know picturing that there was a car parked here last year at this time you know five months ago, there was a car parked here. It's just, um, it's just pretty rewarding. And I think it goes to show you guys, you know, you can do it too. If you don't have a lot of space, get some grow bags, uh, you know, utilize all that, all that space that you do have and just get something in, even if it's on a small scale, or if you don't have a ton of space and you want to pull out that driveway, Hey, go for it. <laughs> we park out front now and there's still the second half of our driveway. So there's plenty of room. And as far as I'm concerned, having the garden is more important than parking my car. So <laughs> I'm very pleased. And I thank you guys so much for all of the support and encouragement. You guys have really, um, really made this a very special experience for me. And I just love connecting with you guys and that, you know, we're able to share the garden together. Okay, I'm going to stop uh, being all mushy now. Um, in the front here, I've got some bronze beauty calendula. And this has been blooming, oh my gosh, for a really long time. I just cut it back pretty hard. Here's a yellow one that just snuck itself in here. And 
I actually really like the yellow. <laughs> it's very pretty. Uh, but I sewed these inside under the grow lights. And with these, you know, they'll keep blooming and blooming. So right now I'm just going to snap this bent bloom off. And you see right there? That's a new bud. So do that with these. Um, the more you the more you pinch them back, the more they'll give to you. And that goes with most plants. Um, I read somewhere recently, the generous gardener has the most blooms. And that really stuck with me because how true is that? Uh, you know, you get to give, you know, the gift of your garden to your friends, to your family. Uh, and then you just are rewarded in the long run with more blooms. And I just think that that's so nice. Um, so anyway, this is the, I think this is the sun gold. But aren't they just looking so beautiful, you guys? They're definitely happier here in the raised beds than they are in the terracotta pots. I just think it's too 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 much blasting sun and not enough um, not enough water because they're drying out too quickly. Got to control my beans here; they're attacking everything. So this bed here, I've got some nasturtiums and a few random tomatoes. This one is ivory pear. And these are from Chanticleer, guys. Um, I'm so excited about that. My friend Sonia, uh, who was in the Master Gardeners program with me, I'm so proud of her. She is just totally kicking butt in the garden this year, doing all sorts of fabulous things. She's got Bullock Garden. Uh, check her out on Instagram. They are a fabulous organization that helps uh, schools and communities uh, build up gardens and educate children and grow food and feed people. And it is just amazing so check out nj garden teacher guys um she's fa fabulous and she hooked me up with these tomato plants from chanticleer and i'm super excited about that this one is an italian heirloom it says so happy happy uh, i have a little this is a peppermint swiss chard there i had a whole row of these but something ate them so now i've got like cages everywhere um these are little mini sunflowers i have an eggplant here and there was an eggplant on it and it dropped off so that's a bummer uh, but you know hopefully it'll bounce back i've got some uh, burpee bush beans in here you guys check all these out lots of them look at all those goodies Woo! i love it uh let's see all kinds of beans tomatoes and beans mostly in these two beds um, and then I've got some zinnia. I just clipped these back and made myself a nice bouquet in the house. These are Zinderella peach. And I planted these direct so uh, in spring. And again, the more you clip, the more they'll give to you. So don't be afraid to make yourself some bouquets. And I've got some carrots in here. And this beautiful guy, look at that. Wow. This is, let me get the right name. Lavaterra Pink Regis, and I uh, grew those under the grow lights. And here's one too, but it's pure white. So I think that might've just been mixed up in the batch there. And I don't mind because it is a lovely bloom. And some onions in here and some borage in here. Looking so pretty. Buried treasure strawberries coming along this is a giant cloche uh, just protecting my berries and a little blueberry bush here a couple little berries got eaten and a rose this needs to be watered but this is a uh, pink cupcake rose very beautiful i have a cup and saucer vine over here that is just taking off like gangbusters there's so many things i was going to hold off there's so many things um, that haven't bloomed yet that I want to show you, but I'll just make another video, right? Just another excuse for another video. But here's the, um, the window box, a better view of the window box. It's so bright. I apologize. Maybe I'll try and get some nice footage, um, when the sun goes down a bit. So this is a nice view. Uh, this is our new patio set and I am so excited about it. We just got it this past week and I really, really enjoy it. Nice space to have, uh, you know, some family and friends over when we're able to do that, um, to sit out here with the boys and have, 
you know, our meals and stuff. It's, it's really nice. And I've got little myrtle topiaries here. I got those from MY Topiary and a little Dichondra Silver Falls here. And also on Instagram, I follow, you guys know, Potager Blog, Linda Vodder. But also I want to recommend my good, good friend, Brandon Lark Roberts. I'll put a link to his Instagram below. He doesn't have a YouTube right now, but he is so fantastic with his topiary and boxwood. Uh, he is really, really great and just a nice guy, very generous in his knowledge. Um, and just, you know, you're, you're gonna learn a lot from Brandon. So check him out. I'll drop a link to him down below. He's, he is my closest garden buddy and uh, I just really adore him. And he just built with his brother, a custom greenhouse. So check him out, you guys. I, I just love Brandon, so. Hi, Brandon. <laughs> um, okay, here we go, moving along. So here is just a little mishmash of plants that make no sense together. I've got some hosta, some sedum. I have dahlia in the back here, uh, Penhill watermelon back there. When I close this umbrella up, it does get far more sun. I just had this here shading me because I was sitting here earlier and with the video and everything, I wanted to have a little bit more shade but just a mix. I, I may, I'm probably going to change this up at some point, some hellebores in here, but it's very pretty. Don't you think all those textures and colors together? And then I lost an Alberta spruce. It looked like this guy here. I think it had spider mites last year when I got it and it's never really looked right. Uh, so I pulled it out and it's no big deal. I'll get something else uh, that matches or two different things that, that match, but I'm not in a rush. Over here, I'm exceptionally excited. So a couple people were asking me the other day, what are the little flower pots all about? Okay, so those are technically earwig traps. You put in some straw and uh, you know the earwigs crawl in and then you can get the earwigs off and away from your plants. Um, right now I have them here purely for decoration. I stuffed a little bit of straw in. I don't really have an earwig problem, but I think they look really cute and sweet. So I left them here and I think that they look cute. The stakes are actually for the dahlia. So these are dinner plate dahlia in the back and you can see they are gonna put on quite a display very, very soon. I am super excited. So the nice soft dinner plate dahlia colors Oh, I can just picture it. Nice breeze today, too. I've got the Sweet Romance Lavender in the front. I did just pop in, you can see two little guys, and I kind of tried to fill in some gaps here um, so that I can have a nice thick hedge. I had lost some uh, last year or the year before, so I just filled in with those. And I've got, do have some, I think this is, um, this is HS Kiss, Happy Single, HS Kiss. So it's a single dahlia with the darker foliage and it is just so beautiful. And I have the shorter guys all along the front here. I have a couple, I think a Bishop of Dover, I think is in here and some different happy singles. So, oh, I'm so happy with it. What do you think you guys tell me? Do you love it? I love it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't help myself. Um, just some white lobelia in my little basket find here. I got that concrete planter for 20 bucks uh, at a local nursery last year, Platts Nursery, love them. And uh, yeah, so just kind of, there's some gara, that's pink gara. I love this particular gara because it has like that burgundy tips to it. So beautiful and pink blooms. Um, I think these will put out another flush of blooms. I had a bunny, my bunny that I've been trying to catch. I've been catching chip bunks. I was trying to catch the bunnies. Just annihilated two dahlia I had planted there. And I just got these two urns here. What do you guys think of these? I got them from uh, Lowe's, $30 each. You can't beat that. They're real concrete. They have drainage holes. And right now those uh, bubble gums are just sitting in their nursery cans because I haven't gotten around to planting them yet, but it sure does look nice. <laughs> And the emerald green topiary there, looking so pretty. I've got new dawn roses trained along the front here. They've put out two flushes of blooms. Maybe I'll get another one and get lucky. So in this window box, I have diamond frost euphorbia. That's the white. This is an annual salvia. They like, uh, they start, when they, when they start to bloom, they're white and then they turn blue. Um, 
you know, the blooms are then blue and it's so beautiful. And then I've got blue and white lobelia. And this is gold dust macardonia. I think that's how you say that. I always get tongue twisted with that particular one. But I just love the mix of the blue and the yellow. I did have another lobelia in the front here in between the yellow and it got root rot. Um, it was getting too much water from the drip irrigation. So I just went ahead and I kinked the, the hose and I come out here and I hand water it now because it was just getting too much. Hard to gauge sometimes, um, you know, especially with window boxes, you've got your landscape pla plants that are really thirsty uh, and want that drink, but then you've got this small reservoir and it's just kind of, you know, if it's all in the same timer and it's all in the same line, you could be overdoing it with some of your containers. So you gotta kinda keep an eye on that. And I just kinked the hose, took put my landscape steeple down on it, kinked, so now the water just doesn't go there. Um, so that's worked for me so far. And my hosta here, are these enormous? Oh my goodness gracious. They are huge and they're just starting to open all their beautiful blooms. I have no idea what this variety is. These have actually been here. I'm gonna say about eight years. Uh, I sent my husband out. I said, Mark, I need some hosta. You know what hostas are, right? Please go pick me up some hosta at Lowe's uh, to put along the garage. And it was gonna be just a temporary solution. Um, we were trying to fill in some space, but I, I love them. I should probably separate them. They're huge. I haven't separated them, but I think they're just gorgeous. Aren't they so pretty? Oh, so anyway, I saved the little U-shaped bamboo hoops from like clematis and things that I buy and it made a perfect little barrier and support to hold up that heavy uh, salvia there and I think it looks really kind of cottagey and cute. I'm going to swing you around. This is a vision. This Cleome in the back here is just spectacular you can see it from inside our family room it just looks like great big beautiful blooms you can see all the butterflies oh it's so beautiful i am really enjoying this space so much um, these are um, rebecca prairie sun so they don't have the black eye uh, in the center and more of the bubble gums in the front here I've had definite bunny problems. You'll probably see some cinnamon sticks dispersed around. Um, guess what? I'm thinking it's helping with the squirrels. I got a bag of cinnamon sticks and I just kind of threw them around because the ground cinnamon, I was coming out here and applying it all the time. And you know, anytime it rained, I'm coming back out here. But then I did two things, well, three things. I put around Repelzol, which kind of smells garlicky to me, and the granular, so I spr sprinkled that all around. But then, you know, as with anything, it's, it seems like the rabbits and the critters and the squirrels start to get immune to things, and they're just like, ah, I don't care. And what was working is now just basically a seasoning for their food. <laughs> So you got to kind of switch it up. So I was alternating between the Repelzol and then doing the ground cinnamon, but then I tossed around the cinnamon sticks and I think it's helping, you know, I don't know. I'll do whatever it takes. And then I went really uh, hardcore and got fox urine. So I have never done anything like that before. It smells horrible. It is what it is. So I was out here spraying around and I have not seen bunny in two days. So fingers crossed that did the trick. Let me show you my Miss Molly butterfly bush looking so gorgeous. Those big magenta blooms. And this is the rock and play in the blue salvia. And my blood good Japanese maple. Everything is just looking wonderful. My pincushion flowers that I planted in spring still doing great. You guys know I'm a deadheader. So, you know, you come out here and when you see them looking like this, see here's a fresh new one. And then this one is spent. You can see it looks kind of prickly. So follow it down pinch it off and you can see in the joint there there is a new bud coming so if you're really good about doing that and I try to be it will put out continual blooms for you and that goes with a lot of perennials so look up what plant you have I need to clean this fountain it's looking a little 
on the murky side. Um, just algae growing inside there. So I'll get a scrub brush and just scrub it out. But this view is like magic to me. Look at that. Uh, I love it. It just does really go to show what you can do in a small space because this is not a big garden. So pretty. I am anxiously waiting those dahlia to fill that fence line. And the new table I think looks great. See that? That's my kid's blow up pool because hey, I'm a mom. I'm a mom first. That's why the videos are on such slow production. Um, it's just me and my iPhone and a tripod and you know, I hope weather behaves and all that. So I really wanna, I wanna make another video or maybe I'll just interject some comments in here, some things that I would change. So I've got the yellow sombrero um, echinacea, which I love and I've got another one here. So, you know, it was a plan to just have like a swoop of them here and it's butted up about to bloom. Um, this is the prairie sun Rebecca as well. I'm gonna move that in the fall over to the patch here so that way all of that is con contained over to there what happened was i ordered that plant last year and i loved it so much that i ordered some more and i mass planted it over in that other spot and i saw not an inkling or a hint that this was even coming back there was nothing i mean it was in the ground gone and to my surprise i saw that it started you know shooting up i didn't want to disturb it so i just kind of left it and um, I will move it in fall to be with its other mates over there. And you can see here, this is great coneflower, Rudbeckia maxima. How cool are they, you guys? I put, I put those in here this year, they're perennial, and you can see them scattered about. They have such beautiful blooms and tall centers that the birds will just come and land on. And I really wanted something like that over here by the birdhouse, kind of like I said on, on Instagram, an all-inclusive resort. <laughs> They've got their, their bathing, their feeding, their hotel, everything all contained in, in this one area. Something I, I like that I would probably not plant again, unfortunately, Gumfrina. I love it. Butterflies love it. For some reason in my garden, it is like the dinner bell for bunnies. I'm telling you, they flocked to these plants last year. They completely just wiped them out. And I noticed that the second I put these in here, there were just bunnies all over. So I'd have to really consider that one uh, for next year because I don't want to invite them, you know, with something that they're finding irresistible. I mean, at least try and give it a little bit of a shot. And then more of the um, pink gara. Here's a, here's a little bloom. Very pretty, delicate flowers. And here is a random morning glory. Once you plant morning glory, you guys, you'll be seeing it forever. Here it is. Whoop. And then I got the root. So if you plant it and you don't love it, it comes out very easily. And I had, I say had, delphinium with beautiful flowers like that one. But Bunny came along and ate them all, every last one of them. So what can you do? It's all part of the garden journey. But they, yeah, they look awful. I've got um, so many things that haven't opened up yet. Oh, I'm noticing a lot of damage on my hibiscus. I'll bet you it's from Japanese beetles. I've been out here every night. I'm going to have to take a look at that. It's either it's either Japanese beetles or slugs. I'm going to say Japanese beetles. Um, oh, that must have just happened overnight, too, because I'm seeing some serious damage there. But that's um, a hardy hibiscus. And I have a, another hibiscus here. So in another couple weeks, this garden will look completely different. It'll give me another reason to come out and do another video then. Um, some more of that Millennium Allium. I just love Allium. They're sweet blooms. Whole bunch of uh, dahlia in here as well. That's what these bamboo stakes are for. And some black and blue salvia that is starting to branch out. I just cut the spent blooms. Here, let me show you my sugar tip rose of Sharon. So the sugar tip rose of Sharon are wonderful, wonderful shrubs. These are um, 
sterile. So unlike older varieties of Rose, Rose of Sharon, these are not going to produce babies all over the place. This is my third year with these here and they just don't do it. I can attest to it. I don't have any um, volunteers and these just put on such a beautiful display of pink ruffled blooms. Let me get in here and show you one. Can you see that? Probably not. Hold on. Let me see if I can. I'll, I'll see if I can get closer in on my on, on the one next door. Hold on. But first, this is a little quick fire hydrangea and this is the best it has ever, ever looked. It is just full of blooms. So I did lots of research in pruning, when to prune, how to prune, and um, I can talk to you guys more about that, but now is not pruning time. So I'm not gonna talk about that now because it's not something we're doing now. You leave, leave these be and let them do their thing. Uh, but they just get this beautiful kind of almost watercolor speckly pink um, on their blooms. They start out really bright white and then they get this like pink variation, which I think is so beautiful. And I'm looking, so I have the Sugar Tip Rose of Sharon down the line here, and my crepe myrtles have not bloomed yet, but they're about to. Here we go. So here's a bloom on my, oh, where the heck is it? So here's a bloom on my Sugar Tip Rose of Sharon. Isn't this lovely? It's this soft, uh, just very pastel pink. And in the inside, it has like a little bit of burgundy. It is just beautiful, beautiful double blooms. And the variegated foliage, I am a total sucker, sucker for, there's one with a hole in it. I'm a total sucker for the variegated foliage on any plant. Um, but this is just absolutely packed with blooms and it is going to look spectacular very soon. You'll see a lot of empty spots here. I actually have some more plants coming, believe it or not. I'm trying not to fill everything up and leave a couple gaps here and there. But again, here's another little quick fire. I mean, you can't ask for more than that, right? Um, and this guy, I moved two or three times and it has just rebounded back uh, like a champ and looks so beautiful very uh, delicate and lacy looking. I just love the blooms on that. And this is, we won't even look at that. that that's a hydrangea that's struggling. Uh, but this is a little lime and it's looking so pretty, putting out its blooms right now. I will show you, I'm joking. I, I always try and keep it real. This is a, um, what the heck is it? Endless summer. But here's the thing. I put it in such a hot spot planted it at the wrong time. I should plant this in the fall when it's cool or in early spring and it is just way too hot here for this variety of hydrangea. I don't want to pull it out. I don't want to pull it out right now and hurt it. So I'm leaving it here for right now. I have a couple others that I potted up uh, and I have it in the shade behind the garage because I don't want to kill them but this is not a good spot for them. Even though it said um, sun to part sun, Sometimes you just gotta trust your instincts and these kind of mop head hydrangeas don't appreciate scorching afternoon sun, which is what we have here very much so. Um, so yeah, I'll move that. And then that's some um, phlox, bright eyes phlox. And this is a Eugenia topiary um, that will have to come inside in the winter. So I don't know what's gonna happen there. <laughs> I still have a tree I haven't planted you guys. This this is a Royal Raindrops crab apple, and I have it on deck here trying to figure out where I'm gonna plant it. So in the meantime, it's just here in its can, and I take good care of it and water it every day. And it, you can see it's got that beautiful foliage. So gorgeous. I love the leaves on this one. They've got like that, that kind of cut leaf look to them. They're just so beautiful. And over here is just kind of a mishmash. I have some dill and some herbs. I'm really hoping to draw the monarchs. Uh, you know, I really, really want to get the butterflies going. I have some um, milkweed and things I'll be uh, planting up this year too, hopefully. I'm trying to get my hands on some. And there's barbecue pool land. There's my boy's little slide. Um, more of the Bordeaux and some Creeping Jenny. But here's our little seating area here too. 
I'm so happy with it. We never really had a proper spot to sit out here. It was just that tiny little table that you guys have seen in all our other videos. So being able to come out here and enjoy this space and really sit and kind of take it all in and admire everything. And just with the lamppost that was here, I think that that really kind of fits and suits that area. It kind of looks like it was made for that spot. I'm really happy with it. And I've got a little lavender topiary and a dichondra silver falls there. Some more of the bright eyes flocks peeking in back there. Some Primo Wild Rose Hookera, which is my all time favorite. Climbing roses that are kind of done for right now. They got um, sawtooth fly larvae and I'm not thrilled with that, but what can you do? And then here's my um, pink geraniums. I always put pink geraniums in these window boxes. And just to show you guys, I talk about this all the time. When you deadhead your geraniums, don't go up here. Follow it down. You can feel where there's like a little nub and you just do it at one handed. Sorry. Crack it off. You can see that little kind of knuckle there. Crack those off at the bottom of the stem and they'll keep blooming for you. You can see, and that is a uh, Betty White Bacopa. Isn't that something? Who wouldn't buy a plant that's called Betty White? I would. I did. But I've got that hole down the line. I'll probably give this spruce to my parents um, and just get two of something else matching there. I really wanted to show you guys how everything is looking and, um, and coming along because I am extremely happy with it. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, it was a lot of work and, you know, still more to come. I'm not anywhere near done and I can't wait to show you guys the dahlia when they're in bloom. Oh, you know what? Let me take you over to the driveway real quick. So I've got the bubblegum supertunia and rock and play in the blues. I love it. Some white gara and then I had hollyhocks back here, you guys, they all got rust. So that's, uh, that's an issue that I'll have to think about for the future and pre-treat them knowing that that's a possibility. But here is a beautiful obedient plant. I have never had this plant before and it is just lovely. I bought it for the sole purpose of being able to push these blooms. I, I see people do that and move the blooms on their obedient plant and I'm a plant toucher. So I really wanted to be able to have that experience. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So I figured I'd end where I started in front of these gorgeous sunflowers. And thank you guys so much for joining me in my garden today. I will be doing a video this weekend on the post install for the Good Directions birdhouse. So if you're interested in that at all, keep an eye out for that video. And then I'll be doing another video, with the low voltage uh, landscape light install. I did a little poll on Instagram asking if you guys would like to see that. And an overwhelming amount of you said, yes, you would. And I am very uh, knowledge in this area. For years, I have been finagling with landscape lights and I finally have it down to a science. Uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, if you, it's a lot of work if you are not sure what you're doing and I have a lot of things that'll make the process much smoother and easier for you. So I have that uh, in the plans. It's, you know, I just have to come up with the time to do it. I'm gonna be doing a new run of lights along the fence here in the vegetable garden where the espalier apples are going. Fingers crossed those are coming soon, you guys. I just got an update from Bower and & Branch and the, the and they're flushing out, but they're waiting for the roots to get a little stronger and I don't wanna rush them. I mean, they're the experts and I just am so happy to have the espaliers in the garden. So. I'm patient and, and I just cannot wait to get those in the ground, but I'll be putting some low voltage lights in front of them. So I'll show you that process. And then another update once the dinner plate dahlia are in bloom, which I can't wait to show you and I can't wait to see. So thank you guys so much for joining me in my garden today. And I hope you all have a wonderful and a beautiful day.